12. Here we go with lesson 12, session 6.7, Applied Trigonometric Problems. Okay, that's a family photo from a long time ago. Hey, if you can name where this is located, those are my kids a long time ago, but if you can name where this is located, send me an email and there will be no prize whatsoever. But I'd be interested if anyone knows where this shot was taken. So how do we label triangles? Well, we label our triangles the same way every single time. We have vertex A, vertex B, vertex C. So this is triangle ABC. Notice that angle alpha and side A are across from each other. Angle beta and side B are across from each other. Angle gamma and side C are across from each other. And this is how we'll name triangles every single time. So we don't have to say A is across from alpha or B is across from beta. If I say side A, you know it's across from alpha. If I say side C, you know I'm talking about the hypotenuse in the case of a right triangle. We'll always make gamma our right angle. So normally what you'll see is given triangle ABC with gamma 90 degrees. There you go. Now we're off to the races. Given the indicated parts of triangle ABC with gamma 90 degrees, find the exact values of the remaining parts. So you notice that it's asking for the exact value, which means no calculator, folks. Come on, Linus, put down your blanket. We have alpha 30 degrees, we have side C is 12. I would suggest you draw a right triangle every single time. Notice alpha is 30 degrees, C is 12, and gamma is 90. So we have three pieces of the puzzle, and now we're going to solve for the three missing pieces. There, there's a variety of ways of doing it. Here, I've picked one way to do it, which I did sine of 30 degrees is, sine of 30 is opposite over hypotenuse. Now you need to know the sine of 30 is a half, I cross multiply, and A is 6. So A is out of the way, it's 6. Now then, to find beta, okay, the two acute angles have to be complementary. So I subtracted that from 90 and got 60. I did that in my head. I'm, I'm pretty bright there. And then for B, you could have gone Pythagorean theorem with it. I did cosine of 30. You've also got this 60 degree angle up here that you can play with as well. We could have gone with tangent at this point because we know A. So many ways to do it. I picked cosine 30. Any, they all end up at the same spot. Cosine 30 is adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine of 30 is square root of 3 over 2. Cross multiply. 2B is equal to 12 square root of 3. So B is 6 square root of 3. So there you go. And I'm sure the variety of students out there could come up with a variety of different ways to do this one. But this works. We have solved for the three pieces that we're missing. We have to give you three pieces, one of which, by the way, is that gamma is 90. We have to give you um, at least one side. Uh, we could give you two sides uh, in addition to that, but normally what you give you is one angle and two si and one of the sides. Now this one's a little different. Given the remaining indicated parts of triangle ABC with gamma 90 degrees, approximate. Now I'll pull your calculators out, because these aren't nice numbers, threes and sevens here. So we're going to be doing, if we don't have an angle, we're going to be doing an inverse function. I, I see that coming. So I draw a right, draw a right triangle. A is across uh, from alpha, so that's 3. B is across from beta. It's very important you get those in the right spot, or you'll get your alpha and beta turned around. Oh, what do you want to do here? Oh, Pythagorean theorem is probably the easiest way to find side C. So A squared, C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So c squared is uh, 9 plus 49. I, I guess I just did the 3 squared and the 7 squared in my head there. So c comes out to be the square root of 58. Um, you could leave a square to 58. Normally, though, we would go one step further there and, and take the square to 58 in our calculator and jot it down to one decimal place. Uh, tangent 30 of alpha is 3 over 7. Inverse tangent would yield 23.2 degrees. And then just like we did in the last example, you would subtract that from 90 to get beta. We could have gone with tangent of beta with 7 over 3 and, did, and performed an inverse tangent function for that one just to make sure these two add up to 90. There's, there's lots of ways to check it. And there we go. Uh, C is square root of 58. Alpha is 23.2. And uh, beta is 66.8 degrees. That, that square root of 58, by the way, uh, you know, 7.6 would probably would have been a better answer there. Well, here we go. Same as the previous example, we're approximating, but ah, 17 degrees, 12 minutes, so this harks back to an earlier lesson. That is not 17.12. You've got to divide the 12 by 60 and tack it on. Let's see what's going on here. So, but there's beta and there's A, so I don't know alpha or B or C. 
And here's my big old mess here. So first thing I'm going to do is find alpha. And if we give beta to you in minutes and degrees, then we probably want alpha in, uh, excuse me, degrees and minutes. That's what I meant to say. So we should track there. We get 72 degrees, 40 minutes. However, um, uh, however, when, when we come over here to do the calculations, we have to come up here and look at our, our, our calculations here where we took the 12 divided by 60 and got 17.2 degrees. And so now that we do 17, tangent of 17.2 degrees, I, I don't think you want to be putting tangent of 17 degrees uh, 12 minutes in there. So get that converted over to a decimal, as you see we did here. And so the tangent is opposite over adjacent. So tangent 17.2 degrees is B over 12.2. Use your calculators. The tangent of 17.2 degrees is this 0 0.3096 times it by 12.2. B is 3.8. Now that we know B is 3.8, <coughs> what you could do is Pythagorean theorem. However, don't use 3.8 if you're going to do that. This is a much larger number. Leave it all in your calculator. You can square it, and, and then you can take 12.2 squared and, and, and do that. I mean, you know, don't use rounded numbers. But it, how I avoid that altogether, though, is 17.2 degrees is exactly 17 degrees 12 minutes. So I hit set up cosine. And so I say adjacent over hypotenuse, 12.2 over C. Um, I cross multiply here. Um, and I end up with C being 12.2 divided by, again, I multiplied by C, I divided by 12 point, cosine 17.2 degrees. And I have 12.2 divided by cosine 17.2, and I end up with 12.8. But again, I could have used Pythagorean Theorem if I wanted to. But if you use Pythagorean Theorem, don't use a rounded value. Use that decimal in all of its glory, square that, and then add that to 12.2 squared, and then take the square root of that sum. All right, so my next couple of examples here, we're going to be talking about uh, express the third part in terms of the first two. So what we're going to do is express part B in terms of alpha and C. So we set up a triangle, a right, right triangle, and only mark the pieces that are, that are missing. You could go ahead and mark uh, the, the A, B, and C, the vertexes here, but we only have alpha, the hypotenuse, and the adjacent side. And they want us to express the third side, B here, and you can notice my final answer has B equals, in terms of the first two. There's, we should probably add to these instructions, they never do though, uh, and a trick function. You're going to have to have a trick function in here. And if you look at it, there's really only one trick function we can go after, and that's uh, the, 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 the cosine of alpha is adjacent over hypotenuse, B over C, multiply by C and we're done. And that's it. B is equal to C cosine alpha. That's what it means to express the third side in terms of the first two. Oh, let's do another one. Uh, again, we're going to express A. Our final answer will be A equals, uh, and we're going to use beta and B. Now, if you see, now I just drew this triangle over here, and I showed you those those three parts. You know, we don't have a hypotenuse in here, so sine and cosine are off the are off the list. We have to go with tangent. So I say the tangent of beta is B over A. Now I'm solving for A, so I multiply by A and then I divide by tangent. And I think there are two good answers here. A can be B divided by tangent beta, or A can be B cotangent beta. The reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. And so there's really two good answers here um, that, that, that you can use. All right, let's get to some uh, real problems here. A tightrope is secured to a post that is five feet off the ground. You're going to ignore that piece for, for now. The tightrope is taunt and makes a 55 degree angle with the horizontal up to the top of the pole that secures it. Approximate the height of the pole if the tightrope is 200 feet long. So here's the diagram. Here's the ground down here. And here is, we're secured to this post that's 5 feet above ground. And here is the line, here is that tightrope right here. And we want to know its entire height. Now I drew this line right here to show you that there's a horizontal line here that cuts off. The height is all the way from the top all the way to the bottom. We can't calculate that right away. We have to ignore this five feet. Our right triangle has a 55 degree angle. The opposite side is x. That's the distance from the five feet in the air up to the top, and the hypotenuse is 200 feet. So our height is going to be x plus 5. So first I'm going to do is find h. 
or excuse me, find x. So I say the sine of 55 is opposite over hypotenuse. The sine of 55 is x over 200. I take multiply by 200. 200 times sine 55 degrees comes out to be 163.8. So it's 163.8 from from the five foot from the five foot in the air spot to the top. I have to then add on that five feet to get the entire height of 168.8. So quite often, you're always going to have to find a right triangle somewhere, but quite often you'll have to ignore, uh, initially ignore a piece of information and then get, take care of it later. But I guarantee you need to find a right triangle somewhere in all of these application problems. Okay, this is, uh, honestly, God, this is the only clip art I could find at the last minute, and I, I have no idea who this guy is. From the edge of a cliff above a level ground, all of our ground is level, a hiker measures the angle of depression to a friend on the ground to be 75 degrees. Angle of depression, if you were to stick your arm straight out to your side and then you were to lower it until you see a point on the ground that you're interested in, that angle that your arm goes through, that's your angle of depression. Nine, nine, nine times out of 10, it'll be outside the triangle. And I'll show that to you in a minute. But again, hold your arm straight out to the side, make a 90 degree angle uh, between your arm and your body and go down until you see your point of interest. The angle that your arm goes through that's your angle of depression. Now the hiker for some reason drops his knapsack off the cliff and it lands on the ground directly below him. Approximate the height of the cliff if his friend has to walk 100 meters to retrieve it. So here is the, okay this is you or me or whoever this guy is and that 75 degrees again stick your arm straight out that 75 degrees is out here. The friend is down here on the ground over here to the right and then the hiker drops his knapsack straight down all right, and the friend has to walk 100 meters in order to retrieve it. And the question is, how high were we? But again, that 75 degrees out here is outside the triangle. Now, we also have something called angle of elevation. Had the friend looked up, the friend would have had an angle of elevation of 75 degrees. Same deal. Hold your arm straight out and move it up, and you would see that. Now, notice this, this 75 and this 75 are the same. This really is two parallel lines cut by a transversal. These are alternate interior angles. I will tell you that the angle of depression and the angle of elevation will always be the same in these problems. But the mistake students make is they put this 75 on the inside and that's wrong. All right, so if that's 75, well then this has to be 15 because again, this is a right angle up here. When you put your arm straight out, your, the angle your arm makes with your body, unless you were born funny, um, is, is 90 degrees. So 75 taken away from 90 gives me 15. The tangent of 15 is 100 over h, so I multiply by h, I divide by tan 15, and I get 373.2 meters. I, I think 373 would have been good enough here. The other way you could have done this is you could have put 75 down here in the bottom, and you could have gone with tangent of 75 as h over 100. Um, sometimes I prefer that because I like having my variable in the numerator. I'm a multiplication of problem away from being done. Oh my gosh, our time has ended on Lesson 12. Get to work on the homework.